Warning, this episode is serious. So Stab came out with a full-length documentary on Sterling Spencer's traumatic and often unbelievable brain injury. <laughs> We're not going to be able to do this. I know, dude. Hey, how's it? You know the rules. Let's get, let's get cereal. It's hard because when I hear our voices like this, I go into funny mode. I know, we're like, how do we do this? This is hard. So much easier being funny. It won't let me watch the trailer because I'm logged in. Oh, I can just go to YouTube. <laughs> Jamie, well done! I felt like a freaking pirate sailing the seas, like finding this new world. I'm like, come with me, online. At that time, there was nobody else doing anything like it within surf. He kind of knew how to make you laugh at yourself. <laughs> and then, whack! It was kind of like watching a bird fly and then fly into a window. I wasn't sure if it was like a skit or not. I remember when he told me the story and he left, I was like, is he bullshitting me? I think a lot of people didn't really take the brain injury thing serious for, for Sterling. Sterling's problems were really, really complex. I wanted to kill myself daily. I'm crippled, I can't walk, I'm going blind. It's like, I just thought people would come help. <laughs> So how does watching that make you feel? This w couple weeks have been pretty hard, honestly. The film, the film, it can't even describe really what I went through. Watching the documentary, it's cool seeing my life being celebrated. Yeah. Like that's really cool. Like seeing Shane and Dane talk and yeah. people I respected. and So that part was really cool, but it's like, when it gets to the brain injury parts, like, it's just tough to watch. Well, like, I loved what Yancey said, and he said it was, like, not love, but it was interesting <laughs> what he said, like, it was like watching a bird fly and then slam into a window. And I don't think people maybe really knew how to wrap their heads around that. It's definitely not something, like, we've talked about that people understand. Well, I didn't understand it, and I didn't know what I was getting into. Right. So what happened is I just got hit in the head surfing. Right. And I had a cut for two days and then yeah. didn't think about it again, really. Within like a month, I needed to wear a neck brace. And it just slowly was getting worse. Within six months, I couldn't walk anymore. Gosh. And Was that like a slow thing or was it all of a sudden? It with was the super slow. <laughs> yeah, like, whoa. But when it hit, it hit. The hardest part was we forgot about the head knock. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, so COVID just happened. Oh. So we thought I had COVID. Weird. And so we thought I had COVID, and then I didn't test for COVID. Before I lost my ability to walk, I couldn't stop walking. Why? My brain was oh. going 100 miles an hour, and I just walked all day and all night. Weird. All night, I just couldn't stop walking. Like, I was walking in the neighborhood all night. Like a little old lady, like. <laughs> and and then I collapsed. You know, I got taken to the hospital. And the doctors were like, there's nothing wrong with him. Hmm. So, like, then I got taken to another doctor, and he was like, he's depressed. Hmm. And they gave me Xanax. And um, I was just like, oh, great. It's Xanax, because they gave me Xanax when I was a kid. Um not a kid like a teenager when i started getting anxiety and stuff so like i was like not this again right <laughs> you've done it before what does it do it just makes you a shell of just yourself a zombie yeah and so like um yeah it was just like hard to go down that route again but i had no choice right because my nervous system was just going bananas <laughs> And I was hallucinating heavily. And my family's just like, they didn't know what to think. They're like, is he secretly doing drugs? Whoa. You know, like they yeah. didn't understand. They're like, because the doctors are telling them he's just suppressed. So they're like, maybe he's secretly doing drugs. Hmm. I don't know. You'd have to talk to my family. Like, I'm just thinking of what a right. million different things they may be thinking, you know, like. Right. 
So I went a good year with my family just thinking I'm crazy. And every day I'm like, oh, like, I'm so emotional. Like, when you get a brain injury, you're so emotional. Like what, like highs? Like happy, Everything's dramatic. So just ev- you're, Everything's intense. Hmm. Everything is so intense. Like, so y- we could just be talking, and then in my injured brain, you're like in my face like, ah! <laughs> and really, you're just like, hey, what's, what's going on? So everything's extreme. It's really, it's like you drink poison. So do you think one of the hardest aspects of this, because we talked about it, is people not taking you seriously? Well, yeah, it's like... Because, let's be honest, you're a goober, and you joke a lot. Well, I was like the boy who cried wolf. Right. And that's like the harsh reality. Right. Like, I'm a comedian. I joke about my life every day. Right. I don't take anything serious. Yeah, it was like kind of the perfect storm for me. (laughs) Right. Like, uh, I mean, the movie is Are You Serious? Because no one knew if I was serious. Right. I love that. <laughs> well, I mean, like, Shane Dorian, Dane Reynolds, your homie Dave were all like, is this a bit? Like, the Andy Kaufman thing. Yeah. Like, he's really sticking hardcore to this. And I kind of, I was going in and out of reality. Hmm. I, I, for two weeks, I remember I would just lay and then just come out of it. I'm like, dude, I got to get help. Hmm. I need, like. <laughs> I got to figure this out. And then I would go back into that state where I would just lay. Hmm. So I was going in and out of like, I need help. And then like, oh. And um, my family was just very overwhelmed because they're just like, we keep taking the doctor and we're not getting. Like answers. Yeah. So finally I went to a therapist, uh, Michael De Maria, who's definitely like an amazing soul. And someone who can really listen deeply. And he's gone through, like, heavy stuff. So when I went to him, it was like he could feel my pain. Hmm. And a lot been of, through stuff. Yeah, a lot of people couldn't understand because they hadn't gone through anything so dramatic. Right. So he was like, I'm going to send you to uh, my friend, Dr. Shark. And, like, pretty much... <laughs> Let's, we can figure it out because he, he does like, he's a Chinese medicine doctor and he just, he went through my whole life of like, and then finally he's like, did you get hit in the head? I was like, yes. He's Dang. like, you have a brain injury. <laughs> Idiot. He hits you in the head. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he's like, yes, you have a, that's it. Like we went through my whole life, everything. He's like, were you spanked? It's <laughs> like every little detail. Wow. I never knew that. And then finally he, he was just like, it clicked for me. He's like did you get hit in the head? Dang. He's like, you're a surfer. He's like, did you get in the head? I was like, yeah, six months ago. And he's like, he's like, that's it. Hmm. And, and that was like, oh, cool. Like almost like, like, okay. Right. But Dr. Shark, he doesn't wear white coats. Yeah. Like he's a Chinese medicine doctor. He looks like us <laughs> right now. <laughs> like he just wears normal street clothes. So he's cool. And so, when I told, you know, my family, they're like, okay. Oh, they still didn't believe they're it. They're like, okay, a Chinese medicine doctor and says he flannel. has a... <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing flannel. And what's crazy is my sacrum, like, blew up from the brain injury. So just, something happened from up here that made my tailbone, like, burst. What? So then I couldn't sit. I couldn't sit like this. So if I sat, I would get so much pain... That my brain would flare, and I would get burning over my entire body for days. Dude. Like, imagine putting your hand on a stove. My whole body felt that way. How did you cope with that? Dude, I was losing it. (laughs) And my family was losing it because I would moan all night, and they're like, what do we do? Like, (laughs) what what the heck? So, like, my whole, I'm exhausted. My family's exhausted. Right, you're in pain. And no one... No, like no one really believes me yet. Hmm. So I w- worked with Dr. Shark. I did acupuncture and took uh, tons of uh, supplements. Hmm. And the supplements helped instantly. It got me off Xanax. And I started coming back to life. Um, and were you vegan at the time? I was vegan before. Right. And Dr. Shark was like, hey, you have to eat meat. Right. And I was like, okay. And I ate my first steak and dude, it was like, 
Because what the fat from the your brain is fat and it needs fat. So when I eat like a brisket <laughs> steak, we, we just ate brisket. <laughs> when when I ate a steak, when I eat the fat, it was like <gasps> I could feel happiness again. It was crazy. That's how I feel <laughs> <laughs> when I get a Big Mac. Well, it's like yeah, it changed my perspective on everything because I was a vegan. So then I just eat like. I would take tons of fish oil and fish oil was like insanely amazing. And I would take all these neuronutrient supplements and then just eat as much meat as I could. And then that's when I started, the burning started going away hmm. and I could start not feeling as miserable. So to get my tailbone fixed, that took forever. Hmm. And it basically, I just, I just needed to not move. But with my brain, I needed to be moving. Hmm. So it put me in this terrible spot where I I could have been walking a little bit more than... Every day, you just try to walk a little bit more. If you're total... Like, I was 95% crippled. So to to recover from that, you have to... Okay, today I'm going to take three steps. Hmm. And then tomorrow I'm going to take four steps. Like physical therapy in a way. Yeah. And yeah. so the next day, oh, I did four was too much and back to three. Hmm. So, dude, I started from step one. Crazy. And so within three months, I'm up to 20 steps. <laughs> so I had to be careful with my steps. They're precious. Like bathroom. So bathroom, and I wanted to get to my van so I could go out for the day. Uh-huh. So getting to my van was everything for me. <laughs> so, like, I had everything ready. Like, um, Amanda had everything ready food-wise and... And I would just go to, like, just get to the van, and then I would go. It was really hard to drive far because yeah. I would get dizzy and vertigo. Ooh, that's scary. So, yeah, it's like you don't want to be driving with vertigo. No. So um, I, like, uh, I would get to the park. I, I I just sat at the park every day. Right. Down by your house. <laughs> for a good two years. And COVID happened. Our bridge broke. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Yeah, our bridge that connected everybody was broken. So then ever. my possibility of getting to the beach was taken away. I forgot about that. <laughs> so I just, I went to the park every day and it was crazy to see like, uh, I couldn't shower. The water was too intense on my body mm-hmm. and changing the temperature messed me up. So I just stopped showering. Dang. <laughs> I started s- stinking my hair was super long and like dude and i had this giant piece of foam Mm -hmm. because i couldn't lay on grass because the blade the grass blades hurt felt like pure knives in my back every little blade of grass i could feel Mm -hmm. with that brain injury you're so sensitive you feel everything people thought i was homeless because you were under a tree on the foam i'd like park my sprinter (laughs) <laughs> and crawl to the tree and lay on my phone. And so I went, I used to meditate under the tree and then I'm under the tree like. <laughs> Just tired. And dude, people were avoiding me like heavily. Like, Ooh. And that was a crazy feeling. Right. Like I went from like Sterling Spencer. Yeah, surfer guy. To the homeless guy in the park. <laughs> wow. And that was a crazy reality check, like uh, how quick everything can be taken from you. Right. And all the rich people in my neighborhood, I I was annoying them because <laughs> they're like, we don't want this dirty bum. Uh, Brock. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, uh, what was interesting is like I was home, other homeless people, they would come and like give me treats. <laughs> And they could, like, (laughs) they were the only ones that could understand me Hmm. because they were shunned from society, too. Interesting. So, like, I I had this gypsy lady that would come and meet me, and she'd give me, like, an orange and massage my feet. No And she would just give me these pep talks, like, you can make it, you can do this. Wow. Like, she was in the Iran war, Hmm. and she got blasted. And she's oh. never been, she's lived in a car ever since. And like, she she can't get back to society's rules. Mm. So like, 
it's like, you know, like all these people we used to drive by thinking like, oh, they did drugs, shame on right. them. It's like, I got to know them. Wow. And I'm like, all these people are injured just like I was. Right. And you can get kicked out of society so quick. Yeah. And that's like the harsh reality of our so- society. It's like if you don't fit in the mold, it's like, shoo, shoo. I mean, I was lucky because <clears throat> my dad was Yancey Spencer. Hmm. And, um, you know, I don't think you can heal from a brain injury if you don't have the money because insurance won't pay for anything you actually need. Really? It's just bare minimum. Well, they will pay for drugs, but drugs don't heal your brain. They just numb it. And you need the nutrients. You need the right environment. You need loving people around you. Like, Mm -hmm. you you want the brain to relax and heal. Right. So, like, um, um, sorry, this is hard. For me, it was a reality check of, like, it's it's a harsh reality we live in. Um, like, um, there's people really hurting out there. So, like, it was hard, like, being shunned from society because no one understood that I had a brain injury. And... Like, that's probably my biggest hurt still. Like, mm. It's, like, lonely. It was so lonely. Yeah. It's like I was drowning, and no one could tell. Right. Like, I would text my friends, but, like, it's just, like, no one understood. No, Just no one understood. Like, if I would have had cancer... Dude, yeah. everyone would have been raising me money and right. carrying me and, like, yeah. taking me s- to the beach to just feel it and surf. And, like, dude, no like no one helped me. And that was, that was the hardest part. Like, it was a stroke of luck, you know, finding the right doctor. When I got to Dr. Doug, I was, I was... I was about to die. Right. I was having nights where I was like, I'm going to leave my body. Wow. And I was so scared. Well, one, I mean, if you want me to interject, I feel like your story has been helping so many people. Yeah. It's like, to me, like we have to change the perception of TBIs. Like it's not a headache. No. It's a cancer. It's, it's just as gnarly. And that person has to figure it out and survive. Hmm. And like when someone survives TBI, it's they survive. And like you don't hear about this stuff. No. You don't hear about it. I've only once heard about it just because of NFL. And those guys just hide it and end up killing their whole families. Right. Because their brain is damaged. Right. And they drink and do drugs and try to numb the crap out yeah, of it. Yeah, they try to run from it. Wow. So, yeah, like Dr. Doug, when I was doing that treatment, I was getting the feeling back in my feet. I was learning, you know, my ABCs again. I had to relearn everything. I became a child. And I, I was a child, and I remember, you know, my it's just really hard for people to understand. And, like, you know, my mom's bringing up bills, and, <laughs> and you're like, I'm a ch- I'm a three year old right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, everyone's like, come on, like, we need to know this and that, and I was like, dude, I can't even work an app. <laughs> <laughs> so it it was, it's just the hardest part is just knowing understanding. Right. If people understood, I could have healed probably in two years, but you know, we're going on five years. <laughs> And I'm probably 50% hmm. better now. And most of the, and it's because it took so damn long <laughs> to, to figure out what was wrong. So, like, I mean, not to compare my situation at all, but we, like, adopted a child. Mm-hmm. And we went through a lot with him. He was born addicted to drugs and 
There's a lot of, he's got a lot of anger issues and stuff. And when you tell somebody, they're like, oh, my kid used to, yeah, he's got anger too. And you're <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, well, he was, a, you know, it's just a whole, it's hard for people. He was ab- abused. Yeah, he was abused. So it's like hard for people to, I, in my situation, I can, I would get frustrated because like no one wants to help us. Like, like we've even talked about it. Like, even close family members, when we were going through a bunch of stuff with our son, Levi, were like, why won't anybody, like, reach out to us? Like, because they just don't get it. Yeah. And if it's not in their bubble, then it's not that they're bad people. It's just that they're, people just don't get it. So they don't reach out. Yeah. It's like, and that's what Dr. Doug sat me down. He's like, hey, no one's going to understand you. Mm. You, you have to cope with that. Um, cause I would come in every day. I'm like, like none of my friends are helping. <laughs> like, and he's just like, he's like, they don't, they won't, they can't understand unless they've been through it. Right. And so sad reality. It really is. And so the brain treatment was great, but it was hard cause you turn your brain on you're like, ah! and <laughs> then like, <laughs> it's just like. Because it just shocks your head. Yeah. Is that what that thing does? It's a magnetic pulse. Oh, I never understood what it was. So you'd go to the doctor and he would do... What and other it was st- an hour drive away. Oh, gosh. So we'd drive there every single day for six weeks. Gosh. So about the end... Of, so it was, it, was, it was incredibly hard. I didn't want to get... I didn't want to go every day. I'm so exhausted. Like, yeah. but it's like, we got to get that brain going. We got to do it. Yeah. So like... um. Yeah, it was the most exhausting thing I've ever done. And then by the end of it, I stood up on a surfboard for the first time. Yeah. How many, how many, so it took six weeks to go from not walking? But. Probably felt like forever. But uh, I realized that was just the beginning. Hmm. Because I was like, he's like, you'll surf in six weeks. But. It's, it wasn't like fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was like me surfing. It was gnarly. Like it was scary. Um, it was just so hard to do. Like it was scary to be in the water. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah it was like, I was at Waimea Bay well, yeah. and it was just like knee high. Yeah. So then for a couple months I was trying to surf and, but the waves here are just so hard. And so the doctor's like, you got to go to Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. Doctor's order. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you got to go to Hawaii and just find a place on the beach. Yeah. And just stare at the ocean and figure it out. Hmm. So that's what we did. We went to Hawaii for two months. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Aloha. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. Oi. Heck yeah. So, but then Wyatt had to go back to school. And Amanda's like, we had to take him back to school. So, Rob Machado was like, come stay with me. Yeah. There's a brain treatment center, like, five minutes from my house. Well, you can just take the electric bike. <laughs> so, I was like, this is insane. Perfect. But that was one of the hardest transitions of getting back to reality going from like basically living in the park living in my own little world yeah dude dealing with like i was thrown into a party (laughs) 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 every night guitars (laughs) (laughs) rob's house (laughs) (laughs) there's so many people that lives at his house and he's got like an orphan they're so (laughs) social so i'm like i'm like trying to uh you're trying to like wrap your head around yeah like I had a really hard time understanding, like, faces. Like, someone would be looking at me, and I'm like, are, are you happy at, towards me? Are uh, you mad at me? And, like, so, so many people. So, my humor is obviously what makes me be a chameleon. <laughs> so, I would just say stupid stuff constantly. I was like, oh, we love Sterling. Like, we're so glad you're here. And I'm, like, trying to comprehend reality. You're like, wait, was that funny? And um, <laughs> I really had to stay in a meditative state of in the moment and um, to stay, stay in the flow state, stay in like comedy. You kind of have to stay in the flow state 
of like don't overthink let it come to you so that's kind of the state i was in and dude rob like it was just like the movie north shore we started with a certain board i could ride a big board and slowly got smaller and then by the end i was riding like this tiny board that's cool it was incredible dude like rob like i could kiss him (laughs) like he I lost my dad 11 years ago, and he, he like, took that role for me. Really? Like, he took me to the beach every day in, a, in his van. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just like you were raised. I've never heard you say that, so Rob kind of became, your, like, a father figure. I just thought I was never going to be able to surf again. Mm. And what's weird... Is like called the movie. You know, he's like teaching me how to say yeah. it. It's like a foreshadow. Yeah. Because <laughs> it like really happened. That is crazy. I never thought of that. <laughs> wow. It was like each each chapter closed. And it was like, okay, I have to move. Like, I really like the Rob state. I didn't want to leave that. But it's like life just pushes you yeah. forward and it's like okay i've got to now so uh, i came home and um to florida <coughs> and i fell into like a really deep depression and i felt like i didn't even get better Dang. and it was really hard and it kind of freaked me out <sighs> so i also need to shout out wave neuro like that was the brain treatment i was doing and they hooked it up and in Cali. Yeah, they're amazing. Like huge. They would like do the brain treatment, the sh- the electromagnetic on my head, and then Rob would take me surfing right after and like wow. get everything moving and like come on and like it was like a rush like dang. And it was it was just so cool cuz that's what he does every morning. Yeah. So I'd sit in his car and his son Jax is in the front seat. It's like we're just a big family, you know, mm-hmm. like a uh, and I was so overweight at the time, like, yeah, I was just every day trying to get better. It's like Rob Machado, co- Rob, Machado Rob Machado physical therapy, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and they had an electric bike, and I couldn't walk, so that was just... Yeah. I had I, I just electric biked everywhere. <laughs> game changer. I could have never done this without electric bike. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hates them. It's like, oh, dude, they saved my life. Dude. <laughs> People do hate electric bikes. <laughs> So, yeah, when I get back to Florida, um, I I was like, I have to get back to Hawaii because hmm. I want to surf those waves. Right. So this house opened up that uh, Joy McDougal hooked up for us, a, a family friend, and we had this insane house on the beach <laughs> for cheap. Sick. And so we, yeah, I just I got to stay in Hawaii for four more months. And I served VLAN every day, and every day I just got a little better. And um, and then I met uh, Marshall Alberga that we've had on the show. and You re-met. You, s- you know him. Yeah, we've been friends our whole life, but not close. Right. And um, that, was, I, that was awesome. I was at this, uh, I was at this paddle out for Derek Ho, this famous world champ Hawaiian surfer who passed away. And I could still barely paddle. And uh, I got sucked out the sea. <laughs> <laughs> what? And Marshall, so out of nowhere, pops up. He's like, Sterling! <laughs> Uncle! <laughs> and I'm like, hey, can you paddle me to the beach? He's like, sure. He didn't even <laughs> ask why. <laughs> <laughs> and it, my story is incredible. It's just people always popped up at the time I needed them. Like, That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. He, and so Marshall, we connected and like, like when he's like oh let's i'll take you to this wave and when we get there it was like a really far walk and i'm like dude i can't walk and he's like he just put me on his back and just <laughs> walked did he really yeah it's like dude. walked me to the water with both boards i'm on his back and he's like talking like you know <laughs> he has endless energy god bless you marshall yeah it was just dude like yeah like 
That's cool. So the right people kind of came in at the right times. So. Oh, like Mar- and Marshall's so fun and funny, and we were just dying laughing, <laughs> and it, it was he was a pivotal part of my healing. Dude, some of those videos, like only you and him could have made. <laughs> we we crushed it, dude. The one with the kitchen and <laughs> just like they're so instant, awesome classics. So it was a beautiful thing because he's he's helping me surf. He would paddle me out. I would hold his leash paddle me out no way and then i once i was out there i could catch a wave and i could stay in the rhythm and i could probably catch like four waves <laughs> before i get too tired right and um and then he paddled me in walk me back to the car <laughs> put me on his back we did that for months dude we gotta get a t-shirt <laughs> or something dude Marshall. it was just like dude some people like some people just like get it and we all live where I feel like it's so easy for us to get stuck in this, like, we need to work. Hmm. And like, I feel like true happiness is l- like loving your neighbor. Yeah. And Jesus said it best. Love your neighbor. Like, it's really that simple. Like happiness. Well, you know, our world is all about consume, do what you want that it's makes keeping you feel up. good. It's just yeah. constantly you, 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 do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. And it doesn't make us happy. No, it's, it makes you just sadder. And like, we're tr- a tribe. Right. We're meant to help each other every second. We're not, I don't think we're meant to live in these houses alone, separated from each other, yeah. like... Like, some of us, like, you have tons of kids, so it kind of becomes, Pretty you know, your own little community. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is good, Em. <laughs> yeah. But when you get injured, you really, you just, yeah, you don't realize how much you need people until everything's taken away from you. Well, like, in some cultures, the whole town raises kids. Like, kids, yeah. like, like, you know, if, have you ever seen a kid doing something stupid and you just want to smack them or discipline them? Mm-hmm. Like, in our culture, that you'd be arrested. In, like, Haiti or other cultures, like, some random dude would be like, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> and they'd be like, what? yeah, they'd be like, yeah, smack that kid. Yeah, we d- we're all isolated in our own little castles, <laughs> edging our yards. We're all our own kings. <laughs> and, uh, whenever I drive by old people in their yards, I'm like, they're just building little castles. All it's like you're... You're so busy doing nothing when we could, <laughs> we could be helping each other so much I know. and we would be so much happier. Yeah. Like you, you used to go to Haiti a lot and yeah. help the kids. Dude. And I know you've always told me like, <laughs> that's the happiest oh, yeah. you've ever been. It's when you're running around like a mango field in Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> All you're doing is helping. Yeah, it's Dude, true. your life is insane. Like people that are mildly depressed, like brain injury, depression is different. Right. It's an, it's a different game, but if you're mildly depressed, just go help people. Yeah. Just stop worrying about yourself. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm telling you, like, you help people, you'll just be like, I, I feel great. Isn't it weird? It's like you don't need anything. You just like, help each other. <laughs> it's like, it's so simple. It is, but it's no one does it. Well, <laughs> a lot of people don't. Yeah. So, what would you say? Do you want to segue to this? To how can you? I think your film. I know it's hard for you to talk about, and I know it's been. <laughs> you know, kind of like not looking forward to filming this podcast, <laughs> but like how can your situation, your story help people? Cause I think the film's amazing. It did a great job in 45 minutes. Yeah. Dave did a killer job. Dave like, crushed him. Yeah. They just did an amazing job trying to tell your story in a, in a small section, but how can you, where does it need to go from here? Well, I feel like this film is awareness, right? Right. Like, um, it's like, a celebration of my life and, you know, turning tragedy into victory, you know. But I feel like, you know, my goal is just to open up like we're doing right now. Like, it's hard. I think that's why TBIs have stayed a secret because no one wants to talk about it after <laughs> they go through it. Like, like, move on, move on. Oh, my God. Like, and I get that message a lot like people you know stoked i'm talking about it because it's like i'm so used to putting myself out there it's like i'll put myself through hell to to help you know like like to get through the ptsd of it um well you've shown me tons of messages from people oh yeah it's been insane it's 
it's awesome, but it's it's hard um, to be reminded constantly. Right. Because I I do want to forget about it one day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like I do want to move on. Yeah. But I also feel like, you know, I don't want to forget about this completely because it's it's given me such a deep appreciation of life. Right. And I don't want to lose that. Um, one of my favorite teachers, uh, he would always say, uh, suffering is the mud Hmm. and like you need the mud to grow the lotus flower Hmm. and the more suffering, the more flower of yourself is going to come out. That's cool. So I kind of live by that now, you know, like every breath, it's like, (sighs) you could be burning (laughs) <laughs> like I burned for so long. Right. Like, like I'm just so happy to, when I'm around people, that's my favorite. Like, I love watching people now. I'm like, mm. it's so weird. <laughs> like, why are people so weird? I love <laughs> people <laughs> watching. Just each personality is so special. Like, people don't realize how special they are. Like, there's not one person. Like, when I I'd sit in Hawaii on the beach and I would just meet people. Yeah. And I would love talking. Dude, every single person has a story. Like, terrible about their that. Their own personality. Like, there's their own magical universe in every single person. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, like, it's, it's like, uh, my appreciation for life now is, like, um, I wouldn't trade that. Like, uh, I think it's going to take some more time for me to, like, I can look back and tr- be like, happy <laughs> right. about it i'm still scarred um it's like being in a car wreck you want to just forget it yeah. you don't want to keep talking about the car wreck <laughs> and everyone's like talk talk about yeah, it talk like, about so it. how are you feeling you're like i'm good just move on i just don't want to talk about it anymore wow dude but i feel like we have other people that have gone through tbis or <sighs> functional medicine doctors like i think for the future, we have to come together and create like a plan, mm. a brain injury plan, just like cancer. Right. Like there's cancer places where you go in, you ring a bell and they put you through this and you yeah. just jump a hoop and you're out. You're like, cancer's gone. Like, right. see ya. They, they beat cancer. <laughs> and th- this girl got cancer during my brain injury. She got over it in like three months. I'm like, I was ready. I was ready. I was messing her. I'm like, we're going to get through this. And she was like back sipping margaritas. I'm like, what the? <laughs> She's like, what do you get? <laughs> you <over> cancer. <laughs> like, that's how dialed in they have it. I see what you mean. And I feel like this has to be the generation. Yeah. Where we set, we create, you know, someone gets a brain injury. It's like, here you go. Like, <laughs> they don't have to go through what I went through. The years of searching. It, it, it was like, it was like the worst um, scavenger hunt yeah. <laughs> you could ever do. Like, you hear about a doctor. You this worked for that person. I heard this works. <laughs> I heard this works. And like, that didn't work for me. That worked for you. Not. And it was right. just like. Bla, 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 bla. And it's like we have enough knowledge now. Like Joe Rogan's always talking about brain health. For sure, dude. And like those guys, like uh, they're on to the like neuro science. It's like, dude. When someone gets a brain injury, we could get them better, like, under a year. Like, I'm on year five. Right, because it took so freaking long. I stress my body out so much to recover. It's like, we could could probably, you know, if someone gets a brain injury, you could probably get them 100% in, in a year. Right. If you just put them in a center and they relaxed and, like, but the... Like, is insurance, will it ever pay for it? Like, <laughs> Well, I hope so. That, to me, that would be the dream, you know? Like, More people talking about it, more people kind of making noise about it. I, When I talk to Dr. Doug, he's just like, he's like, I help people, and then I never hear from them again. Because they just are good. He's like, I think they just don't want to talk about it. Hmm. And... I can totally see that because you kind of want to forget that it because it almost scares you to even. Oh, well, PTSD is real. <laughs> right. Like you're like, I don't want it to come back or <laughs> like right now. Like, I, you know, I'm struggling, but it's. um, Yeah, I feel like um, to me, that would be the goal. The awareness gets to a place where you hear TBI and, and you react just like cancer. Like, right. 
Oh, no. Yeah, you hear the C word, cancer, and you're like, he has cancer? Because you know they're either going to die right. or survive. There's right. a, there's only it's two. <laughs> flip a coin. <laughs> and it's the same way with brain injury, but it's, like, even sicker. It's even sadder. Like, you either find the help, hmm. you either have the money to, to afford it, and it's, like, five years to get better, hmm. or... You become a homeless person on the street. Like as sad as it sounds, you're either going to become a crazy person or you're either going to become a vegetable like I did or like you're going to be half and half and miserable. Like, mm. And the number one thing people die from is they kill themselves. It's right. the number one because they can't handle it anymore. Right. It's, it's a lot. What's weird before I went through this... I don't know if you remember, but I was meditating like crazy. Oh, yeah. Right. I was working out like crazy. You had messed with me all these breathing techniques. <laughs> I, was like, uh. I was doing like <laughs> cold baths. The second I woke up, like, yeah. like in the middle of winter, just like, Ugh! dude, I was so strong. Oh, gosh. And I was so mentally strong. And I think that's what helped me survive. Right. Like I, w I was so dialed in where I was able to handle it. Hmm. But if I didn't, I don't, dude, I swear life, like, you know, you're, sometimes you do stuff and you don't know why and then you figure it out later. Right. There's a purpose. Yeah. And dude, I was training like a maniac for no reason. I had, <laughs> like, I had, everything was set. Like, it was just. Um, well, you've always been in shape and very, like, physically minded. I just, yeah, I just. I think I'm I'm in touch with myself in the moment and you know life was just preparing me and I didn't know it. That's awesome. You know God um yeah. So I like uh I'm a survivor and it's a uh, it's so it's so hard it's so hard being me cuz I'm I'm so silly. Oh yeah. <laughs> It does kind of, and that even this podcast is hard because, like, you know, like I'm I'm always in character because it's fun. <laughs> it is fun. I am too. My wife hates it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just be serious. Well, I hope your story helps thousands of people, millions of people. Well, so many people get hit in the head. Like, didn't you say? Yeah, you I have a buddy that just got out of the hospital today. An older guy that fell off a ladder and smacked his head. And who knows what he's going to deal with now. I mean, hopefully, you know, hopefully he can watch this. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, like, and like, so he doesn't have to go through this. Yeah. Like if he, like if my advice to him is don't do anything. Don't watch TV. Don't look at your phone. Mm. Just relax for months. Mm. Two to three months. Just relax. He'll heal. Just because what? That stimulation? <laughs> like when you look at your phone, it's making your brain work so hard. Mm. And the lights, like, really hurt your head. So if my advice, if you just gotten hit, um, if you gotten a TBI, just don't. It's going to be hard. Right. Don't do anything. What sit, about reading? Sit in your house. No, it's going to hurt. Oh. It makes your brain. Just sit in your house, listen to music, mm. music soothing, turn all the lights down low, and just chill. Eat good food. <laughs> so just listen to music and... Stay away from sugars. Stay away from, like, anything processed because it's going to make your brain hmm. hurt. And I, I swear you'll get through it under a year. Wow. Like, looking back, that six months I had before I... It's because I was trying to do all the crazy stuff I do. Mm -hmm. But my brain needed to heal first. Right. So that's it. <laughs> wow, Sterling, that was good. Well, <sighs> I'm excited because I truly think it's going to help people because it's opened my eyes in a major way to what it means and just reading messages that you're getting. It sounds like people are just so like it, almost like a, there's a voice, another voice out there that's talking about it, and I think it's going to it really yeah, help. Yeah, it's just like oh, I'm not the only one. Yeah, because that's the way it feels. Right. Yeah, it. I feel like um. I feel like we understand each other better now. Yeah. Like, like I was dealing with, c I have CTE. 
It's a brain disease. Oh, it's like, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's what the football players are getting. Oh, okay. And um, you can heal from it. Yeah. Or you can not. <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, yeah. I feel like in our earlier days, like, I would get that anxiety and shut down. It's like, I remember, like, day, it was really hard to work with me because I would go through these you know, like shutdown yeah. phases, you know, and like there's so many people out there that have so much anxiety and like, especially surfers. Yeah. Like these kids, I'm telling you, like we need helmets. We need like, we just, we have to protect them. Like, because. Well, aren't helmets <laughs> like, I was watching something. They're kind of, they, they weren't cool. Obviously helmets aren't cool. Skaters. That's why we didn't wear them. Yeah. And like, Dane Reynolds was talking about it in the film how, like, he dealt with that kind of stuff. And right. it, even he was helped by this. But it's like, wha- like you play ba- baseball, you wear a helmet. Football, you wear a helmet. <laughs> like, sock- or skaters, a lot of them wear helmets. Not, you yeah. know, not the core kids. Divert. And it's like, you're out there with a hard board. And then the, <laughs> and it's like, why are they? Like, I don't know. I'm not a surfer, so I can't really talk into that. But it seems like it'd be an option to wear a helmet. There's this new thing this company came to me about. Um, it's something you wear in your neck where it puts more blood in your brain, which hmm. protects your brain more. I think that could be help. I think we need... Tom Carroll has a really cool helmet where it's impact foam. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen that. I have it. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. There it is. It's called soft helmet. Soft helmet. And this is enough. Like just an just some protection. Just for your normal day surf. Right. Like maybe not pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's things that we could do that we that could protect our kids that are out there friggin' maybe the answer is soft tops. <laughs> <laughs> Life is playing a joke of me and we're all riding soft tops like, yeah. Yeah. You're I'm like Arr. Dang it. Well, sorry this episode wasn't funny, but I think <laughs> this was important and We'll get back to our uh, <laughs> regular normal perp. shenanigans next week. All right. Well, good job, dude. Love you, bro. <laughs> you made it. Love you. We have the same rate. Oh, yeah. Glad you made it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, dude. Seriously. How's it? Thank you for watching Pinch My Salt, the hit podcast of the world's number one surfer, Sterling Spencer. You know the rules. Subscribe and tickle that like button. Pinch my salt. (laughs) 